Uh, good morning to you, my friends, uh, wherever you may be in the world today. Alan Clements from Santa Monica here in California, United States of America. May 18th, 2021. Uh, this is the 39th talk in a series of sharings based upon a newly published book, um, Extinction X-Rated. Thank you for tuning in wherever you may be. Um, today, again, a spontaneous sharing. Um, it came upon me again this morning thinking of the word temporariness. If we knew, if I knew, if you knew, if we knew together that everything was temporary, that's the question, if we knew that everything was temporary, how might we live differently? And upon first reflection of that thought, it's so easy to hear it, feel it, and dismiss it as I know that everything is temporary and I am living my best life within the mindful awareness of that insight, that contextual reality of impermanence known in the Pali Buddhist language as anicca. And on deeper reflection, you know, and I invite you to invite me to invite our friends to, to embark today on a feeling, a more dimensional feeling reality level of words rather than just simply hearing them, not just simply but to hear them in ways that, that we do with food, that nurtures our biological intelligence, that allows us to think and to perceive and to transform the contracting chelases within consciousness of greed, anger, and delusion, and to elevate their opposite states of mind, loving kindness, compassion, patience, truthfulness, wisdom, and vumuti, or freedom. So may I invite you to, to mindfully engage, I wanted to say reflect, but to oxygenate, if you will, learn the Dhamma habit, the positive Dhamma habit of inhalation of mindful intelligence and let it co-occupy the realities of inner and outer being being met at the confluence of the senses in all postures, all times, in all circumstances, in all dimensions. And therein lies where we intersect, we bring Dhamma to the reality of how we perceive the phenomena of life temporary, temporary phenomena, impermanence. If in fact, again, it's just a speculative invitation to co-occupy with yourself and with me and with each other, the radiance of temporariness and how might that affect the way in which we interrelate today, how we may determine our decisions uh, how we may go about choosing priorities. If we knew, if we felt, we do feel, we do know, in breath, out breath, every perception, every thought, every nanosecond of cognitive interrelated time, every whisper, every bird, every morsel of food, chosen and ingested and tasted, every perception, every thought, every nanosecond of thought, every wave on every ocean that has ever been on any ocean, every molecule of water that has ever rained from a cloud, gone into rivers and lakes and ponds, into the bloodstream, every, 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 everything, in this causal dance of interrelated phenomena governed by the characteristic of impermanence. 
if in fact we were to understand temporariness ever more intimately, the invitation today to myself, and if you wish to be included, how might I live differently? How might I think differently? What would I do differently? How might I go about whom I communicate with differently? What might I say differently? An invitation to not chastise ourselves or to confront the belief in our own inadequacy or our own mendacity or our own mediocrity, but to see an awareness of temporariness as an invitation to the elevation of epiphany, of astonishment, of awe, of wonderment, of creativity, of engaged, nuanced intimacy, doing it differently. Okay, temporariness in its most outrageous expression is in any given moment of any given day, hour, month, year, nanosecond of time, like a lightning bolt in the dark sky of existence, mortality strikes. I saw Mahasi Seiro, his attendant, ran into the cottage where I was sitting with my teacher, the Venerable Mahasi Seiro, in August of 1982. And there was Seiro G slumped over his typewriter where he had a massive stroke. And we took his body, lay it down on his bed, and days later, he technically passed away just like that. Mid-thought, mid-typing a sentence in a book in Rangoon in Myanmar in 1982. Not a footnote, but a moment to remember of a Nietzsche. Days later, Seyra Usujata, another Neyaka Seyro, a senior teacher at the Mahasi Center in Rangoon. I was with him in a group of people in his cottage next door to Mahasi Seiro's cottage. Mid-sentence, the Venerable Seiro passed away. How might we act, think, believe, do, restrain, engage differently if we knew Everything was temporary, always framed by mortality and uncertainty, and this increased possible. It could increase or induce shock or fear or anxiety to take on an existential dance with the goddess of death, with change, with Mara's titillation, throwing impermanence across the sky, enamoring us with colors and frequencies and dreams, pursuing like mirages things that do not exist other than as phantasms, bubbles, or dreams within the hallucination of interior consciousness. In reality, you cannot make love with a phantasm. It's a dream. It's a miracle within consciousness, empty of substance, a mirage. Countries, gender, time, names and labels, epochs. Where are they in reality other than causal events arising within the field of consciousness in context inner and outer, without separation, and the incessant obligation of consciousness with the facet of perception of sanya, perceiving reality in a way, making it real where it's non-existent. And we live in the dreamscape of believing that things do exist in time. Some even believe in immortality. Some forget altogether, right? All of us do a lot of the time how impermanent, impermanent, really, 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 really. But is impermanent really the catalyst for heightened quality? 
Make haste where the desire is most readily available. Avoid the unpleasant, right? Navigate this treachery of life and death and uncertainty with poise, with confidence and discernment. If I understood temporariness well enough, it would not just be impermanence. It would be the random encounter with phenomena that are decidedly unpleasant, cruel, demonic. I would like to avoid those temporary phenomena. So when we talk about a Nietzsche, it also is a navigational catalyst to become more discerning, more wise, more profitable in our cognitive decisions about who and who and what I want to be and how I want to associate with the interior states of mind and the phenomena of the perceived external. How well do I wish to live? Quality becomes very enhanced. If today were the first and the last day, whom would you seek company with? What would you text? How would you say it? Isn't that always the dance of those few people that live in the radical radiance of an insight, all the while knowing that it's always there, no matter what? In breath, out breath, quality, engagement, the fidelity to freedom over grasping and attachment. Why would I ever seek to quality bond with anything other than through the intimacy of I see you, I love you, I wish to know you freely, to set me and you freer into higher radiant expressions of wisdom dancing together rather than neurotic belief in control, in need, in satisfying my hunger. Oh, please, goddess, do that which satisfies my deepest hunger. All the romance, all the eroticisms, all the poetry, all the Rumi-esque, Buddha-esque, psychological, psychedelic states of consciousness that we empower to dance in the hallucination of a mutually shared delusion Papancha, it doesn't exist. If we only felt every word, every thought, every sound vibration, every etymological interpretation of a thought within consciousness, every movement of a hand, every eyelid that blinks, every dance, every line of a poem, every book read, every page, everything, 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 everything. So psychedelicized right now. So aware are we of the temporariness of our own legacy, of our own pursuits, our own dreams. Is it that thwarting, my God, cutting everything back to the life and death moment of only now? Is it only about the deep satiation of my deepest understanding of consciousness? What is integrity? There you go, Alan. If we only knew that temporariness was the only thing that existed, causal conditions arising often against our own best interest, who ever asked for a holocaust, a genocide, a rape? We can't shame and blame the girl, the boy, the country for those kind of colossal satanic eruptions within the fabric of samsara. It's all temporary. It doesn't help to assuage the torture of Dachau in Auschwitz and Rangoon and insane prison in Somalia in the aftermath of Pol Pot in the horrors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, endless Chernobyls and the fish and the desalination of the oceans and the coral reefs that are becoming bleached to the point they're in, unrecognizable to their historic natural value, based on what? A Nietzsche Vata Sankara. If we only took it in, right? The angel of impermanence, the angel of death, the dance of a Nietzsche, the incredible love affair with emptiness of self. All things in this phenomenological castle of change, 
I therefore abide within you and outside of you. Together we dance in the emptiness of a permanent subjective presence to the changing world of phenomena, the evaporation of self-centeredness and the illusion of pride and ego, and that too, anicca vata sankara. How well can we occupy the wisdom, Alan? That's the point, the wisdom of anicca. Not only the sanvega or the fear of I can't hold it, I can't hold it, I can't keep your love, I can't keep your bonding, I can't keep your kiss. Reverse, transform, alchemize, elevate. Ah, release. I love you in the dance of freedom. Two arhants in the Nirvana field playing in the delight of Anicca Vata Sankara. Isn't that the sick, mad, peril, bliss, sick, mad, peril, bliss of recognizing this incessant, angular, razor sharp, at times sensitive and poetic, convulsion of dualities. And here we sit in between good and bad, right and wrong, love and hate, truth and delusion. Peace and war, words, 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 words. And it makes me shudder to think that I am situated six foot one, 172 pounds. I've been weighed more in the last month than I have my whole life in these hospitals. All of it, a Nietzsche, empty of self. Dukkha, hold on to me and you, figuratively speaking, will suffer. Learn the art of opening the heart, non-grasping as vocation of mindful intelligence, a trans-spiritual belief application of freedom in action, freedom in action. How often I would hear now, more than ever back in the monastery days, with each breath, allow it to come to your awareness, Egasara. Don't go after it. There are times when you need to be very present with the existential flow of the primordial naturalness of an inhalation that decidedly breathes on its own when you try deeply to relax into the nature of non-control. Wow, to watch breathing take place without volition. To magically be present in the phenomenology of the sensations of coolness and vibration and causality and awareness arising simultaneous to the phenomena of physical and mental sensations in these dyads arising and disappearing in incessant causality in breath, out breath, being in temporary radiance with wisdom as temporary, freedom as temporary. And we begin to see as we dissolve fixation, right? Dissolve the paralysis of identifying with change as permanent, change as permanent. Ah, wow, I can dance. The gift of insight, the flower is opening, dhamma as flower, dhamma as bhava, bhava, the bhavification, the bhavanication of consciousness, nutrients, light, water. What are the qualities that illuminate the opening of being? Anicca vata sankara. I picked the flowers, I picked the roses purposely. I was trained in Burma. Don't just identify with beauty based upon a conditioning. Keep those roses active in the vase. Change the water even when they fall over and brown and become crisp and the water becomes tarnished with the chemicals inherent in it here in Los Angeles. And it's no longer beautiful, Anicca Vata Sankara. 
overcome those conditioning, those paralysis, those conventional labels of what is beautiful. Change, if I only knew temporariness in its more full glory today, how would I live differently? Well, I think if I really know, if I did, oh yes, I will, the immediacy of the in-breath. I will walk with greater grace. I will look and listen with greater respect. I will stand and situate my own conscience in a deeper fidelity to stature in unmediated dignity. I refuse to participate today as I awaken into the insight into impermanence and emptiness and dukkha. I refuse to participate in the propaganda that I am a victim of anything. Not bad. I am not a victim of anything. I am a participant in the phenomena of samsara with the added attribute of having heard, felt, and known Dhamma, the experiential engagement of consciousness, attributes of consciousness that release from fear and engage love. Release from greed and embrace generosity. Release from ignorance and rise in the radiance of a wisdom-infused freedom. That Dhamma, empty of self, cognitive conditions, equally impermanent, engaging cognitive and physical conditions, equally anicca, and Dhamma interacting with Dhamma. The Dhamma takes care of those who take care of the Dhamma. In-breath, out-breath, a type of fearless engagement until we fold and all of a sudden we buy into the propaganda of papancha and deluded views through perception and we forget temporarily ah causal conditions in an intimate interplay of transformational awakening if you so choose figuratively speaking alan if you so choose to empower MQ, mindful intelligence, to see phenomena rightly according to their causality, insight into their unique characteristics, sweet is sweet, vibration is vibration, and the texture of metta is seeking the happiness of others. You know that in your being, and equally, the common characteristics the photonic impermanence of everything. The unthinkable anicca of every vibrational thought, emotion, and sensation in mind and body. What would there be to fear if you and I and our brothers and sisters in our own little network of cognitive sangha were to feel and breathe into anicca vata sankara? All conditioned phenomena are subject to change. To understand that Dhamma law is to live in the highest happiness. Go there, Alan. You're not dying. There is no ascending aorta. You idiot propagandist, get the surgery and save your life. Pursuing the mirage of non-existent truth. Oh, you must embody that non-existent truth because it gives you more time to love and to create, to give, to feel, to teach, to talk, to watch your daughter grow up, to fall in love yet again and be in therapy and do LSD and meditate together. And I cannot wait to roll out the mat and do yoga with you, goddess and walk on the beach and yet again record and all of a sudden in breath, out breath, back to the same talk a month, a year from now and you're saying it more deeply. Anicca Vata Sankara. 
fearlessness of death is the wisdom of the Nietzsche. I see you, angel. I see you, goddess. I see you, feel you, love you, know you, and I honor you as a relative truth. How poignant it is to feel the primordial nature of attachment. Isn't it wild that we are embedded creatures within the ecosystem of various forms of consciousness and form driven by navigational impulses called kama or karma and the results of those phenomenology and the thing known as paticca samupada, causal relation in an interrelated phenomenology given uniquely to the constellation of you and me being somehow a constellation somehow slightly different but deeply intersecting in this incredible shared photonic hologram called existence on planet earth in May of 2021 in this epoch in samsara 200 million years from now the earth will be engulfed by mother sun thank you for the sunscreen very much and it's gone the noise the memory the iphones mr zuckerberg cancellation culture mr trump the maga movement the apocalypse rockets and nuclear weapons and books and mr clemens and sex and lsd well lsd will survive the psilocybin mushroom molecule will survive the genocide and the Holocaust and the Anthropocene and the end of the earth. Where in this great silence are we? The pursuit of Dhamma, not the safety from death. Yes, as a synonym occupation of Nibbana, I would hope the deathless as the Buddha was put forth. But now that I'm reflecting upon these, these characteristics that define all phenomena and trying to feel them on a deeply high dose of psilocybin energy with a deep, radiant, mindful psychological awareness at this very moment, I'm not waiting for the next 10 day retreat. I'm not waiting for the month of June 2022 when Burma reopens post-military coup so I can go back to my Dhamma practice in the setting of a real Dhamma meditation center with a real Dhamma teacher. Yes, 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 yes. But who wants to play a loser's game of the apartheid of a preferred location? A Nietzsche Vata Sankara. Urgency is another attribute. Urgent quality, artistic, aesthetic, application of wisdom in respect to a Nietzsche emptiness of self. Hold on to me and you will suffer dukkha. Wow. Are you, I'm inviting you, are you in the radiance of your Dhamma practice today? Or are you thinking about a workshop, a better place to enact it, a better posture, more different clothing, different settings, more money, less job, a different crises to invent, develop, situate, elevate, occupy, engage, become more conscientious in one's conscience, rooted in one's existential dignity, and therein lies deriving ethical courage from the core of our hearts to confront the madness of these in venerating states of mind called fear and shame and judgment and blame and xenophobia and racism and totalitarianism and hatred and genocide and that absolutely corrupt state of mind called depression and violence. Yes, take responsibility for those quality engagement to overcome. Where does one get that motivation? Stripping someone of all of their worth, all of their accoutrements, all of their badges, all of their pretense, all of their privilege. What would it be like for, for a president, for a prime minister, a premier to be stripped of all artifice 
and there you are in a struggle session with your own conscience, with your own angel of death, your own angel of conscience, having to come to terms with the soul information of who you really are at the best, most refined identity that you can imagine feeling and having the courage to embody. Isn't that the acid experience to plumb the depths of identity so sufficiently that we throw off the shackles of propaganda, of time, of longevity, and we come out of it with astonishment of what? We are abiding in entelechy, raison d'etre, in san vega, heightened courageous purpose. I no longer have stage fright to be myself on the Broadway reopening of Samsara, September 14th, starring you. All through the reflection of if only we felt the temporariness of existence, where would that lead us? How would we think differently? How would we behave differently? What would we do differently today, this week? Don't go too much further than this week, but also, okay, plot your escape from hesitancy. Plot your escape from mendacity. Plot your escape from writer's block, living block, passion block, sexual intimacy block, godliness block, pretense deadening, self-fixation disorder. Whatever we want to do to talk and highlight and to satirize the, the, the propaganda of living ghost-like and pursuing mirages, essentially the pursuit of non- existent objects, the future, time, love, money, security. <laughs> security is such a crazy, crazy propaganda. Oh my God, you can hear, oh boy, he has really gone down. He is really taking this diagnosis seriously. I'm taking it unseriously by being intimately more available to a trans propaganda presence that says, hey, you can't take anything with you into the future. Even what you consider to be your home and your mortgage and your crypto and your Ethereum and all the various things that you do to empower your worth and your stealth and your prowess and your security and that big yacht that you just bought, Mr. Bezos, 457 crummy feet. Talk about carbon footprint on the planet to house you and your babe, to basically do what? To live in the independence of the corrupt tradition of American capitalism at the expense of life, at the expense of life. Throw off the shackles of these propagandas, right? Why not? care for others. The insight into temporariness for me is also, wow, okay, I have lived so well. I have done so well. I'm thinking like, why stay alive? Because there's the incessant momentum of life because of other. Life is an incessant, interrelated, unoptional game of I and other interrelating, sometimes with choice, sometimes against will, sometimes forced upon us, sadly, and other times we force ourselves upon other. And we live in this kind of crummy awakening dance of interrelated fractures and fragments, holograms of love. And here we are trying to awaken together simultaneously in this shared hallucination, what's real? How can I actually be with you in a real sacred intimacy of awakening? Well, I'll close here. Dhamma. I cannot emphasize enough. <laughs> I thank the good women and men 
and the Buddha and the, the female savants at the time of the Buddha and the nuns and the monks, the bhikkhunis, the bhikkhus. I've mentioned on Instagram and a little bit on Facebook this week, 42 years ago, I had the good sense to follow my heart to want to learn the ancient art of meditation in one of the finest places in the world to do that with one of the greatest teachers of our modern times in Burma with the Venerable Mahasi Sato. And I ordained in New York and walked on. I rambled on following my heart to what felt to be the most appropriate and one of the best decisions ever in my life. And here it is nearly 50 years hence. Dhamma. The fine cognitive, mental, psychological, existential, mindful, spiritual art of overcoming, challenging through direct experience of wisdom. No, I do not want to participate in anger. I will do what I need to do to dance with it, to overcome it, but I want to take away blame for it. I don't want to victim bash me any more than I've already been bashed. But I want to understand my own self-created peace. Reclaiming blame, reclaiming judgment, the attributes of overcoming kalesa, and the fine cognitive dharma, spiritual, mindful, psychological, existential art, the aesthetic of inhabiting, dancing with, elevating, maturing, beautiful states of consciousness tempered by a recognition that everything is temporary. As much as we want to be the meditator, the wise one, the liberated one, the compassionate one, we must remove the one from it and live in the fidelity of the authenticity of the state and the configuration or the constellation of the states to live on their own, devoid of centrality, the gift of the fullness of emptiness, the radiance of wholeness without permanent centrality, snowflakes forming and melting, fires arising and disappearing, oceans and waves, galaxies, photons and light and rainbows without centrality, this evanescent dance of phenomenology, and within it there's the constellation of Dhamma. Dhamma, Anicca Vata Sankara. For those of you who've been following me, and we've been friends here both in real time and digitally, and across the planet for the decades and for the years and for the months more recently, I have embarked upon a more intimate study of the traditional Tipitaka, the Buddhist texts, both Abhidhamma and the Tipitaka in the suttas. And I'm particularly fond, I'll end here, I'm particularly fond of how what feels to me to be, a, I just should say, somewhat overlooked dimension of Buddha Dhamma Sangha, the three refuges and the, the, the innate, intimate engagement of Dhamma as vocation of being is, is insight into, I don't know how to properly say it, but non-locality the immediacy of heightened awareness, wisdom, freedom, awareness, wisdom, freedom, a heightened awareness, wisdom, freedom, to feel, and I use the word feel here to be synonymous with the jnana panya chaitasikas, insight and wisdom, have the capacity to discern reality according to their own unique characteristic and also a wisdom to see its common characteristic, which is causality, impermanence, and non-centrality, non-self, 
phenomena arise as rainbow-like phenomena without a permanent rainbow to be found somewhere in that constellation of light, refraction, color, and perception. Immediacy of Dhamma. And how deeply I desire this it just brings me joy to think. I know I'm destined to be in the Sangha of Maitreya, the next Buddha to be in Tusita. I've been making an aditan for this for a long time. I want to be among the secret ones, the boys and girls, my samsaric Sangha. And some of you already together were together in that way. And I invite the rest of you too. But for me, I want to be among my, my Dhamma savants with the next Buddha to be and to see the immediacy of Dhamma made real on the canvas of shared space. Non-local awakening, the, the wisdom of auditory vibration imbued with releasing capacities, how consciousness can hear tonality and decipher in that tonality etymologies, meaning that function to release from greed, anger, and delusion, the photonic, auditory, cognitive, vibrational functionality, if you will, of phenomena to release fear and to engage freedom. That is so rad to me that there is a maestro, a savant, a dharma artist, a vimala, a yasodhara, a gotama, a mahamogalana, a saraputta, an ananda, name them a you, a me, a dhamma embracer of the phenomenology of the immediacy of tuning into if only I could hear and feel with my mindful wisdom. Anicca vata sankara upadavaya damino upatichua nerujanti te san vupasamo sukho I don't chant that to be cool. It's just something that is so breathtakingly pure to me at this time in my life. It was what they chanted, Upandita chanted, to the hundreds of thousands of people gathered at Mahasi Sayadaw's cremation. He took the microphone and chanted, may all beings everywhere <clears throat> understand the wisdom of Anicca, the Dhamma of impermanence, and therein lies a line in a non-fixed resonance with Anicca Vata Sankara. Right now, all of us are in a vibrational orchestration of causality without centrality. Live in the radiance of that enlightened Nibbana, release from fear, release from greed. And how many of these Buddhist texts where the individual or the countless devas angel figures, countless Brahmas, beings without form but with consciousness, and humans. This whole Manusa Loka. They hear, they feel, they taste, they smell, they cognize. And there's just the pure wisdom of of mindful awareness of phenomena according to its true nature, that nibbanic alignment, that our hunship alignment in a temporary sense. I'm not claiming in any way some deep transcendence of these kalesas. I am destined, I am determined in my aditan to know that state of complete absence of fear and delusion. I want to be among those sacred beings who aspire to our hunchship more so than ever now. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Take the time off your heart. Tick tock, tick tock. I hear these suttas, I hear Mahasi Sero in his writings. I'm going to try my best over the coming days, weeks, months, God, God willing, to 
to create and activate, co-live with you and me together and our few fans and friends. When we come together, I pray for the retreat in Maui and the retreat in Bali. That's my real desire, is to create radiant cognitive art pieces that play in the realm of release from greed, fear, and delusion. I invite you, dear love, where do you feel the fear in the anticipation of death? Where do you feel that you still want to live and to taste and to dream and to create and to give back and to care? and to intercourse, and to touch, and to sit back, and to kiss, and to dance, and to cry, and to birth. All those poetics, are they really, 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 really what you want when you feel into the temporariness of all phenomena, the emptiness of all phenomena, your own mind, your own memory, your own legacy, your own future, the future of Earth, the future of the galaxies, this whole creation called samsara, what really matters to you at the essence of your being, in breath, out breath, today? How well will you and I live, right? Knowing what we know, we dare to embody anicca. I refuse to participate in the necessity, the imperative of believing in attachment as necessary. Yes, 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 yes. Two beings, three beings, a planet of beings, an interrelated ecosystem of mind and animal and human beings in this deva world of consciousness beings, interrelated dance beings of all different ways and shapes and degrees of intelligence in this great creative artistry, our own Broadway, dancing in a Nietzsche. And we're all delighting in our recognition, wink, wink, kiss, kiss, love, love, embedded virtuously in Dhamma. I take refuge in Dhamma as a living, breathing, radiant refuge of release from greed, anger, delusion, and fear. Applied meditative trans asana oriented experience as we breathe, so we breathe freedom from overcoming fear. We breathe generosity, overcoming greed, giving as vocation of living. I wish to spend my day today interacting with giving me every imaginable gift and giving you every imaginable gift. What are those gifts? And I end today. May I invite you to invite me to invite your friends. What are the five most special gifts that you honor in yourself? And may I invite you. I put up a photograph on my Instagram and Facebook page, of me being the recipient of Burma's Dhamma, a lay devotee offering food voluntarily for me to go back to eat in the monastery, taught me about the beauty of Dana, generosity. What are those five attributes that you have written down today? Stencils like rainbows and roses on the heart vase of your own conscience. How will you give those flowers away today? And to whom and how many will those flowers be given to you as well? How well will we live today knowing the temporariness both of the gift of the vase and the context and the recipient and the giver? The dance of Dhamma, right? So from my heart to yours, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being a part of my life. I hope to see you tomorrow at this time. And um, thank you for your beautiful notes, your comments. And uh, I hope to see you also uh, in the retreats coming up, God willing, in Hawaii and also in, in Bali. Uh, from my heart to yours, thank you.